struggling to pick between a 60 50 plus or the 60 60 well keep watching this video and it may help your decision Hello and welcome to the latest episode. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button in the corner to get all your bonus points, which do absolutely nothing, but you will at least get all the latest tips, tricks, tutorials and reviews. Now it was inevitable that when ScienceMark dropped the 6050 plus onto the market, one of the questions was bound to be, well, do I look at the newer 6050 plus or do I look at the older 6060? And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Now, this isn't really a clash of the machines. This is newer, this is more expensive and it has better hardware, which I'll come on to later. So any test, well, chances are this one would be winning, but it's not all about that. And we'll cover that in this video. Now we're going to start with the price. Now the 6050 plus comes in at 1799, so $1,800 in reality. Now to achieve the 6060, you have to buy multiple things to build this up. So you start with the 4030 base, you buy the extension kit, and you will also need a bed. Now, depending on which bed you purchase, there's a slight difference, but we're talking round about $1,500. So $1,500 versus $1,800, so a $300 difference. So essentially, if your budget only goes up to $1,500, then this is the one for you instead of that. But let's talk about work area now. Now the 6050 has a work area of 600 by 500 millimeters in inches, that is 23.6 by 19.7 inches. And the Z travel is 115 millimeters, which is 4.5 inches. Now, if we compare that to the 6060, this is technically advertised as 600 by 600. However, as I've shown previously, if you move the limit switch brackets out a bit, you actually get 640 by 640. Now in inches that is 25.2 by 25.2. The Z travel on this is a little bit less. It's only 110 millimeters, so five millimeters less, and that is 4.3 inches. So not a huge amount of difference in the Z height travel, but actually, quite a considerable difference in the work area. If we convert this into a volume of the maximum cutting area it can actually complete, this is around a third bigger than that. And this is where we really start to get into the trade-off. You know, what is more important to you? Maximum cutting area or perhaps the hardware? And if this was a straight hardware shootout, well, there is no doubt that the 6050 Plus pretty much wins in every area. They both have NEMA 23 step motors, but the ones on the 6050 are bigger and more powerful. The X and Y axis on this one also runs on linear rails, which is better than the wheel system on the Prova XL. The Z assembly is beefed up on this, and as opposed to the 6060, where the entire Z assembly moves, only the spindle actually moves, which is a bit more efficient on this. And they've also made some improvements such as hiding where the rails are out of sight to avoid dust getting on them. Dust baffles obviously protecting the X and Z axis as well. So again, just keeping things a little bit cleaner and making it tidier for you to look at. The one area where I probably would say that the 6060 wins is on the Y axis of this, it is driven by one single motor. It is a more powerful motor, but on the 6060, it is driven by two separate separate stepper motors on each side. And I have to be honest, I do kind of prefer that. It, it does mean that the drive is equal on both sides. They have limit switches all around, so they're even on that front. And probably the only other thing to point out is this has a 65 millimeter spindle holder. So it will take your average um, Makita, Bearwa, and also things like a 1.5 kilowatt spindle. The 6060 comes with a 69 mil diameter holder, and this will take your DeWalt in instead. So that is one thing to consider. Now, obviously it's better to have a bigger holder and you can always put something in to shrink the diameter down. Whereas if you're buying this one, you won't be able to fit the DeWalt to it unless you buy an additional holder. And now I'm gonna talk about ease of setup because this can be key to some people. The 6050 comes as one complete package. It's partly assembled, so you just connect a few bits together, put a few bolts in, connect a few wires, and you're kind of good to go. There is a little bit of weight in setting it up, but ultimately, as I say, it is probably easier to set up than the 6060. And the reason for this is what I touched on earlier. You have to buy the 4030 to begin with. You then have the extension kit for that, but you have to take some parts off the original 4030 
and move them over to the 6060. So there's a little bit more tinkering going on. It's really not difficult. I've done it in, um, in one of the videos in the corner where I'll show you how to set it up. But ultimately, as I said, there's a little bit more work to build this out than there is that one. So if you want to be up and running as fast as possible, well, then this is probably the easier machine to do so. And the final thing I'm gonna cover is expansion. Now, at the moment, this is what it is. There is no extension kit available, and I don't believe one is in the pipeline for it. So this is as big as it's going to get. However, with the 6060, there is another expansion kit available to make it even bigger into a thousand by thousand work area. Now, obviously you can go straight in and get the thousand by thousand extension kit up front and ultimately make it a bigger machine than this straight away. The price difference I think is $100. So that will cost $100 more than this machine in total, but you will have a much bigger work area. Or you can do it in incremental stages buy the um, 6060, then upgrade later to the 1000 by 1000 and overall that will cost $200 more. So ultimately, to jump straight up first, there is a $100 saving in order to do that. But ultimately, the point I'm trying to make there is this one will not expand, this one will and can potentially grow with you if you need to start machining bigger things. So with that information, how can I make your decision easier? Well, the split really is as simple as this. If power and precision is what you're after, then the 6050 plus is going to be the one for you. This one machine, hard materials, faster and more precise. So maybe if you're looking to do things like metalwork, this is the one that should be in your shopping basket. If size is the main thing and you just want to do bigger projects, well then the 6060 may be a better route for you. You save some money with that option, which could go towards a router, a bigger spindle, maybe even the 1000 by 1000 expansion kit a bit further down the line. Now they are both great machines. This has been my workhorse for the last couple of years and I was super excited when I got the 6050 into the machine, into the workshop, and it did not disappoint with all the tests that I did on it. So both great machines, just which one meets your needs the most. Now there are some links in the description area to the, both of these machines and the latest offers available for them. So definitely do check them out. If you've enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and as always subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Final thanks as always goes to my patrons. If you wanna get involved for one-to-one -one help, early access to videos and even giveaways, then check out those links in the description area as well. See you all on the next episode.